yeah uh, thanks very much over here it has for starting the recording so thank you i think we will yeah. yeah i think we should basically proceed with our session you know let other participants join in meanwhile yeah sure manoj sure no problem we can proceed thank you so much yeah yeah i will you. be unmuted if anything you can call me directly on my mobile because i'll be little okay. away from the system for a while okay, okay not an issue not an issue yeah thank you yeah thanks very much okay so guys as promised is today uh, you know i was telling to all of you guys that uh, you know all of you would be able to see the uh, filda system so here is the filda system as i was basically talking earlier now few things you need to know now i know very few people in this batch are already uh, having some knowledge on filda good but other people also who is just coming into this particular batch and they want to basically understand what is filled us how, how the things will happen so yesterday basically we had a brief uh, like peek into filled us so in yesterday session basically what we tried to understand was like what is the implication of filled us and how filled us is being utilized in the current environment for the different different organization but if you are suppose like <coughs> excuse me if you are basically trying to suppose say that uh, manoj i want to learn filas now immediately in ariba generally what we do after the demo session we will directly go into the modules different different modules and then we will basically talk about all those particular thing but here in filas i cannot do that why because few of you who are having some knowledge in filas they will be able to relate maximum of the participant will not able to relate what is happening where it is happening so it's important that we understand certain terminology first okay so let's talk about this terminology yeah a little bit uh, what you can say uh traditionally we will go so first and foremost thing is basically yesterday we talked about sow what is the full form of sow the full form of sow is statement of work now of course all of you will basically say yes uh i know about it no statement of work but what is exactly the statement of work how statement of work comes into this picture now as i said statement of work means oh it's a contract very good you know very good you know you know you don't have to basically think about this in a much better way contract right but contract between whom contract between whom now that is where before coming to sw you have to talk about fg ha huh? so fg means fill glass please don't think fg means what fg means fill glass Excuse 
excuse me find supplies are those organization who will basically find contractors and share risk with the buying organization okay now basically coming to the last terminology that is the worker who is the worker contractors who will work on the specified project they will basically be called as the workers over here okay now guys just give me a moment just give me a moment okay so this are the yeah i think i think i'm audible with all of you guys over here so yeah yeah thanks for the confirmation yeah thanks for the confirmation now as you can see there are four options which we are basically talking about over here right so as we were basically talking about buying organization now who is the buying organization in short it is our client who is implementing the fill loss right so they are basically the buying organization coming to the next thing buyers who are the buyers buyers will be the employees who is belonging to your client specifically those guys who will create a fill you know a statement of work and the contingency workforce management and the job posting suppliers are basically those organization who will find the contractors because contractors will not immediately come over there to the buying organization right so they will basically find the contractors over there and not rick sorry and share the risk with the buying organization now can any of you guys take a guess when i basically talk about this point that share risk with the buying organization what risk are we talking about over here i think we discussed this thing in our yesterday demo session a little bit i think all of you guys can share your viewpoints in the chat box yeah in the chat box you in the go to training app there will be a chat box over there so there you can basically type in your you know views and click on send yeah share your views okay okay that's good that's good legal risk yes correct compliance risk yes correct anything else financial risk exactly correct replacing the resource exactly correct exactly correct commitment risk financial uh, you know replacing the contractor means commitment risk over there exactly correct you are correct very good exactly so that is our goal over here new resource training yes to some extent yes employee replacement or employee termination yes correct exactly see that is why that is why i asked for all of you guys views over here now why this view is very very important over here because see when you are learning something new when you are learning something new you have to be very very clear about the things which you should understand risk when i am basically talking about just tell me uh are, are, are you uh, are you able to hear me actually you know uh, I, i will say something guys you know you will laugh at me when you will you know hear it over there so uh, uh what happens is like there will be you know some evening pujas which will be happening right so the evening pujas it will happen over here in our uh, what you can say in our buildings over there and due to that what will happen is like uh, there will be a lot of dogs now when these dogs basically street dogs when they will hear this you know this bells and all those things they will start shouting they will start shouting like anything 
and and frankly the positive thing and the or the negative thing i don't know but i am basically right now in a balcony over there okay in my building and there i have basically kept ac <laughs> and a desktop okay and i basically teach from here why because my family will be staying uh, in the bedrooms and halls right watching tv over there so when i will basically talk about this thing and it's just you know on the street side only and i think some four five feet i think four feet or five feet far all these some seven eight dogs will come and they will you know shout like anything <laughs> so sometimes if you're getting this kind of you know all these dogs are shouting like this <laughs> understand that you know something happened over there so they are basically shouting among themselves <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think now it has stopped over there right because those guys have stopped yeah awkward problem but what i can say <laughs> yeah <coughs> excuse me yeah now as i was basically talking about over here uh it's a contract but we will come to the contract but before that as i was saying that share risk with the buying organization this is a very very important thing now when i was basically saying the risk are the very important thing why because you have to understand it because if you don't understand this thing what will happen is like when i will basically discuss what is sow what is contingency workforce management what are the different different things which will come into the picture you will not fully comply what is happening or where it is happening okay so keep this thing in your mind now when you go to the worker who is a worker worker we are specifically you know specifically talking about contractors <coughs> excuse me right contractors who will work on the specified project exactly so these workers are nothing but the contractors right now if i ask all of you guys that sow is a contract very good who are the parties between between whom the contract is signed can any one of you guys take a guess who are the parties who will be taking uh, or participating in this contract you can share your views over there now i don't want correct answer i don't want wrong answer why because i don't want answer i want your views service provider uh, see again service provider uh, this is a very generic term i haven't used service provider in this four terminology over there in this terminology what i have basically talked about is this four type of organizations of persons over here so service provider i mean i am assuming that you are talking about the suppliers over here okay suppliers are there very good workers are there very good some of you guys are saying between buyers and suppliers some of you guys are saying suppliers and worker very good assuming this is good ah all three all three buyers suppliers and workers that's the correct one now let us try to understand why is it so why buyers suppliers and worker three of them is going to be present in the contract now if it is between buyers and suppliers what will happen so buyers will basically say okay you sign a contract with us then what will happen supply will say okay i agree to your terms and condition this guy worker oh i am not in the contract i will not perform my activities they have taken me for one year i will not do any activity that's the issue if the buyers and workers are coming into the each other who will share the risk then who will share the risk <laughs> similarly if worker and supplier are coming into each other then who will hire their services so all three of them is required okay <coughs> excuse me it's a contract where 
buyers, suppliers, and workers will participate. Okay. Now, why? Because buyer is basically saying, I need a contractor. And this contractor should do the work. Okay. But they cannot directly hire this buyer. A buyer cannot directly hire this worker. They need suppliers. Why? Because suppliers will share the risk. Supplier will basically move on to other things. Correct? Exactly. <coughs> Excuse me. So you should basically keep this thing in your mind. This is a very, very important stuff for all of you guys to remember and to understand. Okay, so this is a three way contract. Specifically, I have once worked as a freelancer. Okay, and, and not right now, I think it was maybe in 2000. <coughs> excuse me, 2011. Yeah, almost like one year at that point of time. Uh, so what I was made to do is like all these interview went, I cleared the interview. Then when this contract was there for me to sign, there was a contract between me and the what service provider or in this case, the supplier over there. No, Fidelas was not there at that time. <laughs> Nobody knew about Fidelas at that time. Yeah, it was there in US, but in India, nobody knew about it. See, Fidelas was basically made popularized in the uh, SAP ecosystem from 2016 onwards. Why? Because SAP acquired Fidelas in 2015. Yes, Fidelas was there from 2000, I think, I think 2000, I think two or three maybe because there was one guy in canada i think indian only something shekhawat that guy along with another two guys founded this free glass but it was not sap supported that means it was not acquired by sap it was acquired by sap in september uh, december 2015. so one contract i have to sign with my parent con organization <coughs> excuse me and there was another contract. Now this contract was with the organization where I was deputed. Now in that one, I have to sign and the supplier also has to sign. So that was a three-way contract. So that is basically called as a SOW. Why I am basically coming into this part and discussing on these things? Because it's very, very important. If you don't understand this thing, this will lead to issues later on. So that is why I'm coming into this part. Now, let us come inside and let's talk about what will be there. Of course, whenever I will say contract, terms and condition will be there, right? Why? Why? Because all of you will say yes, from a contract perspective, it you know it should be always be terms and conditions specific. Yes, I totally agree. But there is another need for it. Why? Because if you recall yesterday session in SOW process, the resource or the contractor is under the operational control of whom? The buying organization or the supplier? Can any one of you guys recall it from yesterday's session? Operational control of the worker in SW process. Where is it? Can any one of you guys take a guess? Now, some of you guys are saying suppliers. Actually, two of you, you know, three of you said supplier. Okay, three of you buying organization. Okay, another supplier. Uh, supplier. Okay. So the correct answer is supplier. Now, 
those of you guys who have given the answer as buying organization, that was for CWM, Contingency Workforce Management. Yes, example, right? Rahul, Rahul was the example of SOW. So Rahul was under the control of operational control of supplier. Exactly. So buying organization cannot say to Rahul, hey boss, you do this thing. Rahul will simply say, no boss, no, I am not there. I will not take care of all these things. So keep this thing in your mind. Okay. Very good. So this buyer are not work. This workers. So now this buyer cannot directly say anything to worker and if the for any work suppose your manager is there manager is basically saying oh fillers is there very good uh, create one sw template now this manager directly cannot say this to the worker worker will say boss who are you i don't understand so what will happen this manager will say to the buyer buyer will say to the supplier then supplier will send a mail to the worker and then work will happen and if you think that is the case then what will happen all the hell will break loose in that scenario yes under that scenario all the hell will break loose so what will happen within the terms and condition of course it will be there 30 days notice period, uh, this much amount of rates and all those things will be there. But all those things will be there. Just like, for example, the SOW will be for fillers implementation. Within the terms and condition, it will be written 20 SOW templates, 5 SOW type, okay? 50 job posting templates, okay? Approval workflow for SOW approval workflow for in you know timesheet approval approval workflow for job posting okay integration of fillers with ariba including the you know integration points okay so you have to basically <coughs> excuse me keep this thing in your mind so once you keep this thing in your mind, this is how the things will happen. Okay, very good. So that is how the things will happen over here. Okay, so that is why in terms and condition, every work detail will be written over there. Now what will happen? Once the worker gets onboarded in the team, here the manager will say, hey, we talked about this 20 SOW template, yes, start creating it right now. Huh. You need a little bit more details that we will write in a mail and give it to you. So that means what? That whatever is the work, what is the task which is required to be performed by the worker will be contained in the SOW. Why? Because the operational control of the worker lies with the supplier. That is why I said to all of you guys, yesterday's session was, you know, very short and sweet and simple. But in reality, it is not that simple. A lot of things will come into the picture over here. Okay, so keep this thing in your mind. Now, very good. Of course, of course. So now this is a very good question. Each worker will have own SOW. I'm giving an example. You are having a very big fill glass implementation. 
you want to hire three resource will you create one sow or two you know three sows share your views guys once again you know it's an excellent question by the way javed an excellent question so share your views guys fail class one fail class implementation project three resources is required three sow or one sow share your views guys come on share your views nothing will happen and nobody is going to eat you up and specifically you are here to learn so you know even if you are asking wrong question or sharing your wrong opinion you know speak up then only you will learn otherwise you won't learn okay now i think lot of uh, response came many of you guys are saying three many some of you guys are saying one some of you guys has written one sow for multiple workers so sorry let us try to understand what's the end result don't look at the number of workers over here what is the end result the end result is fillers implementation how many fillers implementation only one now why you are saying you will need three fillers worker sorry three workers because of one thing because it's a huge project and since it's a huge project <coughs> since it's a huge project you have to be very very clear that three workers is required so that means what please remember this thing one sow is equal to one worker wrong one sow for one requirement that means what is the project requirement now in your project if you need one worker one sow same project three workers one sow one sow only <coughs> excuse me okay exactly so that is basically our focus now excuse me you will say are manoj s4 upgradation upgradation uh, technical upgrade from ecc to s4 one project ariva implementation another project filters implementation another project so for this i will need 40 resources all of them are contractors now what i will do now that's a very very interesting question so remember here you have to go and ask your end user are bhaiya you tell me s4 is dependent on ariva they will say no s4 will be, upgradation will be the first project we will do simultaneously if we can do ariva that's good but it's not like you know it has to be in the same pace simultaneously filda start very good but not mandatory so then immediately i will say boss three projects this is not one project s4 you know upgradation ariva implementation filled us implementation three different projects now you decide okay for s4 i will need 30 resources for ariva i will need five resources for fillers i will need five resources so what you will do one sow for s4 with 30 workers one sow for ariva implementation with five sow workers another sow for fillers implementation with five sow workers like this you have to strategize so that means it's not dependent on the worker it depends on the project requirement so if project is different so different sow will be there if project is same same sow okay keep this thing in your mind now okay terms and condition will be there pay rates will be there of course <laughs> without the pay rates how will you know right supplier fee of course it has to be provided for risk taking and
Now, when I say business rule, you know, please don't think you have business rule configuration. No. How the invoice will be created? That means, of course, all of you will say, Manu, sorry, you know, worker will create a timesheet, submit the timesheet. After the approval of the timesheet, then only what will happen? What will happen? Invoice will be created, but will the invoice create, be created manually or it will be created automatically? Similarly, when the supplier is expected to be paid once the invoice has been created, payment terms will be there, right? 45 days, 30 days, or maybe uh, one week, or five days. And generally 40 days won't be there in this case if you keep it 40 days nobody will come generally after the invoice is created it will take you know within two working days we will pay you or within three working days we will pay you those are the payment terms you know so please don't think in procurement oh we are having 45 days or 60 days and if you want to get paid immediately give five percent discount here it will not work so supplier will say hey my margin is 10 percent boss and you're asking me to give you five percent so how I will basically share your risk. So that is not applicable over here. So within one or two working days, the payment will happen. Okay. So these are the business rules. Okay. It can be defined from the template. It can be defined from the SOW type. Okay. So this is a basic data, which will be there in the statement of work. Now, <coughs> excuse me. I don't need to ask any of you guys saying who will create the SOW, excuse me. All of you will basically say buyers will create the SOW, exactly correct. But when you create the SOW, is it mandatory that you know which supplier will be selected? Or some of you guys are saying no, some of you guys are saying yes. Now, I will tell you something, try to understand. So in certain scenarios, yes, you will have the suppliers. You will know the suppliers, but in certain scenarios, you won't know the supplier. Suppose the example which I took, S4 HANA upgradation from ECC. You need 30 resources. Do you know which supplier you will basically take? Now, some of you guys will say, yes, Manoj, are we know big, big consultancy are there. Who can give Randstad is there? <clears throat> Excuse me. Right? Those kind of consultancy can give me 30 resources. Yes and no. Now, if you say Randstad, yes, Randstad might give you that thing, but Randstad might charge you very high rates. They will say, okay, 30 resources and you want the project to work properly over there. So we will basically take 30% as our supplier fee. <coughs> Excuse me. 30% of their supplier fee. Huh? And a boss getting a good consultant is very high. Like you have to spend $600 a 
every day or maybe 500 dollars i'm talking about the us consultant if you come to the india side <coughs> excuse me you have to spend for a good experienced guy right total 15 16 years of experience in sap and five four to five years in fill glass or in s4 you know you have to spend somewhere around 300 usd to 350 usd each day on top of that 30 percent so another 100 usd so 400 to 450 usd on each consultant per day you have to pay so there you would like to have some competition right why not call some four or five supplier or maybe 10 15 supplier and say this is our requirement now you give me your quotation now those of you guys who are coming from procurement all of you will say are manoj this is sourcing in ariva this is called a sourcing right rfq in erp correct that is how we will do it and i will say exactly so is that process available in film glass yes it is available so that is basically called as asow bids okay uh, okay very good statement of work bits what happens over there describe the requirement and and publish it to where to the suppliers what next then Wait response. That means price quotation. Now here, please don't say what is the quality. <laughs> what are the qualities? So uh, some of you might basically say, okay, price is one of the factor. Quality is also another factor. Same thing in Ariva. What we will do? No, you cannot do that. Why? In this case, Randstad cannot say, I will give you 30 years experience as a big consultant. <laughs> Another consultancy will come and say, I will give you 20 years experience consultant. No, it cannot be like that. So in the requirement, the buying organization will write, are a boss, at least five plus experience in S4, total 10 years experience in SAP. These are the basic criteria that means minimum criteria ah, above it also you can give but these are the basic things it cannot go down no no not rfi this is rfq that means in term of ariva this is basically a sourcing project rfq or rfp request for proposal that means we are only talking about price quotation over here exactly no technical beats uh, you know, there is nothing technical about it. Why? Because at this point of time, even if the SOW bid is completed, you don't know who will be a worker. When the SOW will be published, then basically the supplier will catch hold of other guys. Then they will know once they get selected in the interview. Okay, these are the guys. So that is why you cannot say about technical things. But in Ariba, when we are talking about RFP, in the RFP, you know, if you have come and attended our session on Ariba, I will say quality parameter. Why quality parameter? Because the product are with you. If you want to buy a laptop, you will say, okay, HP Spectre X360. 
these are the technical parameters of this laptop why you know about this particular product because you have that product and you already have the documentation of the product but these workers you don't have the worker you have to find a worker right now you're just giving a quotation for all these 30 supplier uh, sorry for all these 30 workers as a whole so you don't know who these 30 workers will be okay keep this thing in your mind so here supplier will basically give the price quotation now what will happen So here, once the supplier basically give their quotation, now, <coughs> excuse me, buyer will basically compare, excuse me, the supplier response. Once buyer compares the responses from the different different supplier, they will select, okay, we will go ahead with this supplier. Once we say that we will go ahead with this particular supplier, what will happen? then only the awarding will happen. Now, once the awarding will happen, then what will happen? Now, this is a question which you should always ask yourself. Once the awarding has happened, what then? Correct, correct contract. Contract means what? Okay. So after awarding from here, the statement of work will basically start SOW. Exactly correct. So that is why I will say SOW bid is optional. It's not mandatory. Okay. So please keep this thing in your mind. Ah. Are Manoj, SRW bids, we will always do. No, 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 you don't have to do it always. But sometimes you have to do SO bid, SRW bids after the awarding, then you can basically start with the SRW. Now, no, 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 no. Remember, this is this is a very important point. If you don't have supply, then it will be optional. No. Remember, you will always have the supplies. Now, now, why I'm going into SRW bids? Now, do you think this S4 project, will it happen every two years or every three years? No, right? Exactly. Maybe once in 10 years or maybe once in 15 years, even once in 20 years. So if you say, I need highly skilled 30 or 20 SOW worker at the same time for one project, then immediately that project should be very high value project, probably running into millions, millions of dollars. That is not regularly used. So for a very large scale project where you need very expensive contractors for longer duration, then you will try to reduce the price a little bit. Then you will go ahead with SOW bids. Now it's not like you don't have supplier. You know the supplier, but you want to reduce the price a little bit. That is why you will do the SOW bids. So there is a misconception among the fielders consultant that SOW bids, we will do it same for sourcing. Why we do the sourcing? Because we don't know who is the best source of supply. That means who is the best supplier. Same over here, wrong. In fill glass, SOW bits, you are doing it not because you don't know about the supplier. You know about the supplier. To reduce the price, you are doing it. 
now there is a question if you already got supplier you know the five ten supplier suppose you already know the ten supplier but then why you will go ahead with if you develop it because those 30 contractors are very very expensive <coughs> since they are very very expensive excuse me you want to reduce their price that is why you are going ahead with the sw bits if it was only three consultant or two consultant or five consultant directly sw will go now that's a very good question why should we go with fg we can go with ariva rfp or auction now in ariba how will you capture this data how will you capture this data the rates the quotation of the supplier will be based on the rates and all those things in ariba do you have rates structure do you have pay rates can you capture the pay rates in the supplier response no you can't do that there what will happen is that he will have one field to capture the data So what buyers will basically sit with a calculator at the total value they will take and then they will calculate okay how much per day it does not make sense each worker has service like see again again what i am basically saying is see ariba is not the correct product for this correct so what you are talking about is basically enhancing the product yes we can enhance the ariba product but remember when you enhance it remember that enhancing will not only apply for this product this will apply for all the rfp all the auctions so suppose you are basically taking a material can you capture the pay rate over there or normal service item so there it will change the process so that is why we cannot use ariba see ariba you, you cannot basically make ariba behave like that of ecc ecc is on premise system so there you can put lot of enhancement you can basically customize screen different different screen okay was rfq for fg related services a custom screen you will create a custom process you will create you will not touch the other process that you can do but you cannot do that thing with ariva why because if you try to give that enhancement request to ariva ariva will first first thing first they will say no much how how much money you pay to us we will not do these changes why because these are core changes core changes means what core changes are those changes which will basically affect the architectural integrity of the cloud solution that means it cannot be done for one client it has to be done for all the client and ariba will say no client wants like this so we cannot do that so they will reject that's the you know you can say the positive thing or the negative thing of cloud solutions up to a certain th you know things you can enhance not everything okay and specifically why i will do this thing sow bits i will be using it very less time but why i will basically enhance ariba for that yeah so keep this thing in your mind now this is what we have, have been talking about is sow bits then basically we have done the sow but but everything is happening where everything is happening in fill glass now all of you should ask me are manoj where ariva is coming in between yesterday you talked about integration with ariva correct My question is how you can convince business not to go with FG? No, you don't need to convince them. See, this thing, uh, 
you know, there are a lot of consultants who also ask me that how will you convince your client to go with Ariva or not with Ariva? So I have worked with Ariva pre-sales guys. I have worked with Freelas pre-sales guys. So what will happen is like, whatever we say to our client, ultimately client will go to SAP. And when SAP will come into the picture, SAP will immediately give a written certified document to the client saying for advanced services procurement, we will not do any announcement in Ariba. And we don't have any plan to implement anything regarding advanced services procurement within Ariba. That is why we are having SAP field loss. And without enhancement request, you cannot implement SOW bits process within Ariba. And there, Ariba will flat out reject. Why? Because we don't have access to the source code, so we cannot change it. And if SAP Ariba does that particular enhancement request, they will be hitting their leg on the act. You know, they were hitting their head. They will basically make the axe stationary. Then they will hit the head on the axe. Why? Because they are already having expensive product. Freelance is an expensive product. And they are giving that opportunity within Ariba. So why any client will use it? You will need enhancement request. How will you basically capture the pay rates? Pay rates is based on the number of hours, number of days, number of uh, what you can say, number of uh, months. So how will you capture that particular information? Can you create any data type in Ariva? to the service line you will do it but there you will basically give the total value can you capture the total value with that of hourly rate daily rate monthly rate can you do it like that you cannot basically implement the pay rate exactly okay excuse me now let us go into this thing guys see see the thing is like you have to remember guys that in certain cases we can use fg certain cases we can use ariba so now your business solution is clear how will you convince it that's up to you but as i said if you want to basically implement the feature of ariba uh, fillers into ariba you will need enhancement request because the data type will not match over there. You have to create the data structure for that. That's the major thing. Okay, now, as we were basically talking about this SOW bits and SOW, where is the FG Ariba integration coming into the picture? That we have to know. So we will understand this thing, but before that, let's take a break. You know, we will take this break for 10 minutes. After the break, we will basically continue with our session. Okay. Now, uh, you know, we are not finished with SOW. <laughs> After SOW, we have to do contingency workforce management as well. Yeah. So let's take a break, guys. Uh, guys, as I told all of you earlier, that during our content presentation, when we will be having our content during our session, uh, you know, we will not take direct question over there, will not unmute any of you. We will basically unmute you after our content is finished. So once our content is finished, then you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask me the queries. Yeah, because it will basically break the flow. Same thing we do it for Ariva, same thing we will do it in Phil Glass. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, let's take a break. And after the break, guys, this will be 10 minute break. We will basically continue with our session. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Let's take a break.
<coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Hello, guys. Uh, am I audible to all of you? Can you please confirm? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for your confirmation. So, so as we were basically talking about a field of integration with Ariva, so let us try to understand it. So we'll begin with SOW. So SOW will be created. Once again, it will be created by whom? It will be created by the buyer. But where it will be created? It will be created in FG. Okay. Then it will go for approval. Of course, I don't have to basically show you the approval, right? Exactly. So keep this thing in your mind. Very good. Now, once the approval happens then what will happen this sow will go to whom to the supplier now supplier will basically confirm the sow sow worker what will happen next So the next thing which will happen is after doing this thing, again, this will also happen in FG. Now, approval. Now, why I am talking about this approval? Yes, yeah, supplier will, of course, use, they will use for filters. <laughs> no, there is no, nothing like uh, filters over there. You know, they won't use it. They, they will use it. Yeah. So when you all of you will basically get the access, you will see that we are giving it access for buyer, for supplier, and one for worker. Three access you will basically get. When you will get access from us, that means when you will register for the course, you will get this three access, not one access. Okay. Now, why I'm talking about this approval over here? Are Manoj? like you did not talk about the approval for SOW, but why you're talking about this? Because this approval is important because of this SOW worker. Of course, PMO will be part of the approval. <laughs> of course. Why? Because PMO is the one who is basically raising this request. Exactly. Exactly. So PMO will be part of the approval. Huh. There are other levels also. PMO will be at the initial levels, but upper levels will be also be there. Three, four levels, five levels will be there. <coughs> Excuse me. No, no, I'm not talking about just the approval for the resource. What I am basically saying is, since the SOW worker will be added over here, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So, excuse me, they will schedule the interview, right? Excuse me, they will schedule the interview. Then basically what will happen? They will basically shortlist the SOW worker. So that is falling under the approval. So I have just written approval, not for approval workflow. Excuse me, approval on the SOW worker. So what does approval means? This is basically called as the approval. I'm not talking about the approval workflow. I'm talking about this process. This process is basically called as the approval. Once this happens, 
how will the salary Sa salary is not right in sow by default this credits will be there right so here what will happen is like see this is not sow bid this is sow so within the sow only you will basically select the credits okay that means the buyer will basically give the pay rates over there. Now, sometimes you might say the supplier will say, Are boss, the uh, you know, pay rates are too low. So they will not confirm, they will reject it back. Once they reject it back, what will happen? Again, the buyer will basically change the pay rate and publish it. Then the supplier will add SOW worker and they will accept the SOW. worker will not come into the picture over here who will accept over here I, I think i think this is causing some issue let me just you know make this thing a little bit more easier so that all of you guys can understand worker is not coming into the picture Okay. Uh, 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 you know, till this period, you can basically change it. Till this period, you can basically change the pay rates. But after the short listing, you cannot do that. Why? Because PO will basically get created. Now, that means what? That means in SOW version one, you cannot change. You will understand it. I will come to that particular part. So keep this question in your mind. Meanwhile, let me complete the process. Then ask me this question because then I would be very easily be able to make you understand. Because once you see the process, then it would be easier for you to understand. Until unless I don't tell you about the process, this will lead to issues. Okay. So let me just show the process first. And then I will basically talk about this pay rate changes and all those changes in the SOW. So here, worker is not coming into the picture at all shortlisting of worker has happened now what will happen is like pr will get created where ariba buyer now those of you guys who have uh, you know who knows about ariba you will know what is ariba buyer but those of you guys who don't know about ariba for them it might be a little bit different why because you have to remember ariba buyer is basically that portal where the buyer will log in there's another portal in ariba that is called as ariba network that is where the supplier will log in okay now once the pr gets created pr approval will be there once the pr is approved generally what happens is like three levels will be approved where after the shortlisting of SOW worker, there will be approval. Three levels will happen in FG. One level will happen in Ariba buyer. That means within this PR. Once it is done, what will happen? A PO will get created. Where? One second in Ariba buyer. Now, this PO number will reflect again the SOW once it is getting created. Okay. So now pay attention. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now, where it is happening? This is happening within the FG buyer. Supplier cannot basically see this thing. Supplier cannot see this thing. Within the uh, SOW view of the supplier, supplier cannot see it. So that is why another step will be there. Can any one of you guys take a guess why PO is being transmitted to the Ariba network? Any guess? I don't want answer. Guess. Why this PO is transmitted to Ariba network? Any guess, guys? <coughs> Excuse 
excuse me. Excuse me. Now some of you guys are saying for the GR and IR. No, not for the GR and IR. Excuse me. Ah, exactly correct. Because as I said, reflection of PO is happening within SOW, but only who can view it? Excuse me, only the buyer. Only the buyer. Supplier will say, Are boss, where is the PO? Because without PO, how we will basically do this stuff? I need the PO. Yes, SOW is a legal agreement. I totally agree. But where is the PO? PO is a general process in procurement. Advanced services procurement or services procurement or material procurement. PO must be there. So that is why this PO is transmitted to Ariva network. And as I told a few moments ago, Ariva network is the portal where supplier will log in into Ariva to check those POs. Now, of course, please don't think after this PO confirmation, ASN will happen. No, nothing will happen. Supplier have the PO. That's it. Now, what will happen? SOW worker onboarding, we are once again in SG worker site. Now, SOW worker will basically create their credentials in fill glass. Okay, why? Because they've been selected and the PO has been generated. Now, once this FG worker create their credentials, they will start working. After the working, what will happen? After every month, timesheet submission. By whom? By the FG worker. Will happen. This will go to where? This will go to the FG buyer. Now, some of you guys might say that Manoj, there is a small option where the supplier can also approve this timesheet. Now you tell me which organization, which organization, which organization will basically give this timesheet approval to the supplier. Why? Because the PMO office will basically say, are your work is done or not? I will check it, not the supplier. So that is why that business rule is never used. Yeah, it is given for flexibility, but nobody uses that. Why? Because the buyer will always say, boss, I will approve it, whether the work has been done or not. So timesheet approval will happen from the buyer side. Now, once it has been done, then it will be done. What happened? This will be transmitted to the supplier. That means supplier can basically see the approved timesheet. Okay. After that, auto invoice creation. Generally, in every project, what I have seen is auto invoice creation. Now, some of you guys can basically fight with me saying that Manoj, supply can create an invoice in Ariba network. Never ever it will happen. Why? The requirement origin point is fill glass, not Ariba. So how will you generate an invoice? And that too manually in Ariba. So auto invoice creation against the timesheet. Where? Now I'm coming to that AP system. I'm coming to that. That means AP means financial accounts payable, right? I'm coming to that auto inv invoice creation in FG wire. Very good.
ट्रांसमिटेड टू अरिवा बायर अगेंस्ट पीओ ऑल ऑफ यू आर हैप्पी चलो इट केम ओवर हियर देन व्हाट देन व्हाट यू शुड ऑलवेज कीप वन थिंग इन योर माइंड ईआरपी एक्सैक्टली सो this po when it will be transmitted transmitted to ariva network it should also be transmitted to erp transmitted to erp keep this thing in your mind now what will happen transmitted to byte against the po after that it should also basically move to erp that means po has been sent to erp and invoice once it is sent to ariba wire from there it will also go to erp why where it will get processed it will get processed in erp after that what ariba wire ariba network and in fg both buyer and supplier now remember this whole process time sheet submission this whole process time sheet submission will continue every month until and unless the duration which has been mentioned in the sow gets completed 6 months maybe one year so every month this will happen theek hai now there is one comment from the fg ariba integration it is clear that fg without ariba will be a messy implementation and not optimal now i think in majority of you guys in your mind you can understand that why sap always say that if you are implementing fill glass implement it with ariba no matter fill glass can be implemented with erp or fill glass can also be implemented as a stand alone system but it will not work properly now here the whole end to end process can be tracked can be automated right now some of you guys basically ask me this thing acs service entry sheet the question is why you should be thinking service entry sheet is required what do you mean by service entry sheet service entry sheet means what that means the service part which is required to be done has been completed either partially or fully right that means that some part of the service is completed or full the sub, you know full of the service is completed then you can go ahead with the invoice but here you don't need that why because time sheet is coming into the picture time sheet is getting approved based on the time sheet the auto invoice is getting created so why you will need acs why you will need service entry sheet so that is why ir see i have written ir invoice reconciliation right and payment it will happen in erp so ir we always will be two way check over here it will not be three way check and even if you do two way check please don't think ah uh, invoice will be created wrongly why because invoice is getting created on the time sheet approved time sheet it's not being done manually so that means even if you are do, doing two way check but everything will fall in place why because even if the worker submits the wrong time sheet it will get rejected and invoice is getting created automatically that too against the approved time sheet not against the time sheet approved time sheet so there won't be any issue see this is the thing as a sap consultant when you are going to implement certain things you have to basically tell your client okay this process should be optimum in nature
ठीक है सो दिस इज बेसिकली द गोल नाउ देयर इज अ क्वेश्चन हाउ द फाइनेंस विल अप्रूव द इनवॉइस इनवॉइस व्हाई इट विल बी अप्रूव्ड सी वेयर द इनवॉइस इज गेटिंग क्रिएटेड इन फिल्डर्स देयर विल बी नो इन अप्रूवल प्रोसेस फॉर द इनवॉइस सिमिलरली दिस इनवॉइस अच्छा आई थिंक आई हैव टू राइट दिस थिंग ha huh. this invoice is getting created in fielders buyer it is transmitted to ariba buyer as well as the erp as what as a read only document you cannot do the approval against the invoice in s4 why because the invoice is in read only mode it's a destination system it's not the origin system where is the origin system auto invoice creation against the approved time sheet in fielders so in fillers also there will be no approval for invoice why because automatic invoice creation is happening no manual invoice is happening so you don't need approval process for that see when you go to implement certain process right remember optimum result you should always think about automating the process now here whenever we will go for any ariba implementation with fillers we will always as, as well as erp will always say boss automatic invoice why automatic invoice because i will say see in here time sheet is approved by whom by the buyer so when buyer is approving the time sheet that means they are checking everything and then they are approving once it is done based on that automatic invoice should be done why manual invoice will be there because if manual invoice you you are giving this option then you are opening up a lot of opportunities for invoice approval invoice mismatch and this issue will not be felt in only in fillers it will be felt in ariba as well as in erp so when you are designing the solution you have to basically keep this thing in your mind that everything should be optimum so i will say, always say to my client boss time sheet you are approving right yes you are checking everything yes then you are approving yes then what based on that automatic invoice will be created it will make your process simple efficient and very fast immediately client will say okay we are ready with that supplier will also say very good no more issues so that is why if some of you guys who are coming from s4 side or mm side or some of you guys who are coming from ariba side you know there is a thing called as ers evaluated receipt settlement many big big suppliers they will basically say make a crs why because we will not cre create the invoice if i will create the manual invoice defective goods are taken or basically found out what will happen my invoice will get rejected because the gr will not be full so make me evaluated receipt settlement supplier so based on the gr whichever goods non damaged or non faulty goods you have received based on that automatic invoice will be created and my payment will be on time because the faulty goods which have been basically sent to the buyer it will be returned and then i will claim for the insurance with the courier but for that let's say out of 100 product 10 product is faulty your invoice is held up for one month and after the invoice is basically rectified again another one month will take you have to wait for 45 days so you will basically get mad but on the other hand when ers is in a belt okay 90 good has been found in a very good uh status so immediately gr will be done for 90 then what will happen automatic invoice will be created based on the gr so for 90 quantities invoice will be automatically be created and within 30 days or 45 days you will get paid for the rest of the 10 quantity it will be shipped back to you so then you can claim the insurance for that same thing over here so i am just giving an example ers is with respect to you know erp and ariba ers here we will not use ers here we will not use ers but why ers is preferred by the buyer uh, as well as the supplier it will it will make your process fast efficient manual interaction is not required there will won't be any delay same thing over here so that is why when you are going ahead with the auto invoice there will be no invoice approval acs won't be required at all
this is a question which i have been asked many time by the clients and then we will make them understand acs is not required why because instead of acs over there service entry sheet that means it's saying certain part of the work is completed here worker is basically submitting a time sheet saying okay one year you have hired me so one by 12th of your work is completed so time sheet is acting like a you know acs over here which again will go for approval for the buyer side now <coughs> excuse me some of you guys were basically asking me <coughs> that one knows no 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 ers functionalities is not here present it's not present over here at all ers from a filter's perspective is not present at all i was just giving an example okay that is why i said ers in ariba comma erp why it is being preferred but remember in filters there is no ers concept okay keep this thing in your mind now some of you were basically saying to me manoj if i want to change the pay rates if i want to change the uh, what you can say terms and condition can i change it of course you can change it but when even after this one also higher and payment and status update why because as i was saying to all of you guys that time sheet submission this will happen every month so let's say after the fourth month you decides that you decide that this project will instead of completing in one year it will take one year six months and this uh, sow worker who is working he is a very good guy you know who can do the work very properly so what you will do you will go to the sow once again over here okay change the duration from one year to 1.5 year change some terms and condition again it will go to the supplier now supplier cannot change the sow worker they will confirm the changes version 2 of the changes this will not happen why because shortlisting of worker has already happened now what will happen it will trigger a change in ariba it will create a version 2 of the pr once it is approved it will create a version 2 of the po now what will happen this new version of the po will go to ariba network as well as in erp but against this po for the four months whatever the invoices have been created that will stay So any new invoice when it will be created, it will be created against the version two. But the historic invoices also will be stored. So please don't think oh version PO version two means PO version one has got deactivated. That means also has got deactivated. No, <laughs> the four months of invoice will be staying. Those information will be staying. Okay. So keep this thing in your mind. So you can change it. Ha. Huh. But once. All the timesheet has been approved 12 months. After that, you cannot reopen this because the process will become closed. So in that case, you have to basically copy this SOW and you have to create another one then. <coughs> Excuse me. But my suggestion to all the clients is that uh, till this time, if you want to change SOW multiple times, do it. But once the PR is getting created over there, <coughs> excuse me, I will suggest not to do it. I will suggest not to do it. Why? Because this will lead to a lot of issues. So what's the solution? Best practice solution, excuse me, Manoj, what is it? So then I will say, you want to increase it by six months, but you don't want to create a new version for the SOW, for the PR, for the PO. Copy this SOW. Okay, let it get finished by December 2022, but from January 2023, another six months till June 2023, copy from that old SOW, give the new dates, keep everything same and publish it. Then much more simpler. Yeah, why? Because see, there are a lot of integration over there. Yes, you can do it. I'm not saying technically you should not do it. Technically, you can do it. But to make the process much more simpler and easy, why? Because Filas, Ariba, ERP, all of these things are coming into the picture. So in this case, 
copy from that SOW and give a new dates. Don't keep it from June 2022 to December 2022. Then what will happen? It will be totally different. You have to keep January 2023. That means the extension of the six months. January 2023 to June 2023. Yeah, it will be much easier. Your supplier, your worker, yourself, that means your employees, buyers, they will be very clear about it. Otherwise, what will happen is like, you know, uh, it will make the process much more complex. Your finance team will basically say, Are, what is happening? Two versions of the PO is getting created. When they will do the tracking over there, for them, it will be a little bit difficult. System wise, there will be no issue. But the guys who will be doing the tracking or auditing, for them, it will be very, very tough. They have to take care of all these things, capture all this data. That is why. Okay, so keep this thing in your mind. Now, this is basically the ESOW process. Now, there's another process which we talked about, right? contingency workforce management now in this case what will happen job posting will be created same thing uh, in the job posting what will happen it will basically contain the pay rates uh, the duration and uh, other details but there won't be just a moment huh, just a moment this kind of terms and condition will be there general non-compete nda that means why because this is basically signed between the whom buyer and the worker that is why this will be the terms and condition but there will be a small small terms and condition and what is that? Of course, you have to onboard the supplier. <laughs> you have to onboard the supplier. Without onboarding them, how it will work? Correct? Exactly. Keep this thing in your mind. Now, in this case, what will happen? Supplier will find a contractor. So a small terms and condition like you will bring the you know good resource. You will not basically bring faltu resource kind of thing. Terms and condition will be there. Very small. But mainly, the terms and condition is between the worker and the buyer. That is the goal. Okay, now uh, another thing is there, I think I uh, forgot about this. Now here, supplier fee percentage or absolute amount also will be there, but for the whole duration. That means every time sheet, whenever it will be filled, there the percentage of the absolute value will be paid to the supplier along with the worker fee. And then basically supplier will pay the worker. Okay, so here the payment when it is happening, it is happening to the supplier. So please keep this thing in your mind. Now here, we are having an upfront supplier fee. Okay. Uh, 
Now, once you basically get the upfront supplier fee, what else is there? No business rules over here. Why? Because worker, they don't need to know about the business rules. They will fill the timesheet. Timesheet will be approved. They will get paid. That's it. Okay. But there was another thing which I, you know, I did not say about, but try to understand that concept. You know, you know, generally it will never be used. Okay, it will never be used, but I still I should basically uh, talk about this point. MSP. Have you heard this name anywhere before, guys? Any of you guys? Managed service provider. Who manage all the services of the company? Correct. Take care of your application. Yes, correct. Exactly. So we are expecting in fillers whenever you work with SOW bits, SOW or contingency workforce management, the buyer will basically create all of them. Correct? Buyer will basically work on them. Now, in certain organization, buyer will say, Hare boss. Uh, Phil Glass is looking like a rocket science to me. And they are making a lot of mistake. Now. Now, what will happen? So they will basically say that uh, that was MSP is the one uh, organization who already is like a supplier who is already like a supplier they know how to use free glass so what will happen the buying organization will say to the MSP boss uh, you take access from us, okay? And whenever there is a requirement, we will send you the requirement. You have to create the SOW based on our data, our inputs. Take care of this SOW, ensure the compliance. Approval, we will do it, but you will handle the fielders buyer side for our organization. Okay, the approval will be done by the you know buying organization over here, but rest of the work like SW creation, uh, inputting the data, checking the data, they will do it. So that is basically the work of a MSP. And for everything, whenever a MSP basically will take care of this SOW contingency workforce management, they will be paid a certain fee, percentage of a fee. Generally, it is 5% or 10%, something like that. Now, I think all of you guys understood that majority of the buying organization generally don't use MSP. Why? Because it's like sharing your uh, uh, confidential data, right? Whatever work you are doing, which type of contractor you are hiring them, all those things. Yeah, it, you know, it, 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 it would be a big issue. So that is why MSP is a concept which is provided by Philglass, which can be used by the buying organization or the client who is implementing Philglass, but 99.9% .9 of them will not use it. Okay. So I know it is not a very important concept, but still you should understand about the concept. 
okay exactly so keep this thing in your mind now in contingency workforce management here also fg arriva integrations will come into the picture okay so please don't expect that here also you don't have fg arriva integration there is an integration and we'll understand it but after a break so we will take a break for 10 minutes after the break basically we will understand how contingency workforce management integration with arriva comes into the picture yeah we will have a look at it and we will understand it also okay so let's take a break over here guys and after the break we will basically continue with our session thank you guys let's take a break
Ah, uh, guys, am I audible to all of you? Can you please confirm? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for your confirmation. Now let us go and understand. Job posting. Once again, whom? From the FD buyer perspective. Okay. Now in this case, once again, what will happen? It will go to the supplier. Now here supplier cannot confirm the SOW or confirm the job posting. What they will do? They will add the workers. Okay. From the supply side or they will propose the workers, multiple workers actually. Once that is done, then what will happen? This one. Okay, short listing of buyers. Now, once that particular thing is done, so here technically, technically, a work order should be getting created, but it will not happen. If 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 Philos is a standalone system, here work order should get generated, but it will not happen why because of the integration so in this case what happens like this now here it will be a slight difference what is the difference Reflection of PO as work order within SOW. Okay, very good. Now, not SOW, sorry, within job posting. After that, what will happen? Just a moment. Reflection of PO as work order. Okay. Very good. There is no Ariba network over here because uh, you know it will not go to the supply. So in this case, once this PO is basically you know uh, reflection of POS work order happens over there, it will directly go to ERP. not a sorry once again to erp okay now the onboarding of worker in fg worker is little bit different why because here the bank details uh, and other information of the worker is basically captured why because ultimately the payment will happen to the worker so that is why it is very very important that you capture this information that's the first thing next same thing will happen time submission time sheet approval okay but here it will not be transmitted to the supplier why because supplier is basically not involved over there 
So once this particular approval happens, what happens is like this. Just a moment. Auto invoice creation against the timesheet. Okay. Invoice transmitted to the Alibaba against the PO. Okay. And this will also go to the ERP. IR and payment will happen in ERP. Status update in Alibaba, not in Alibaba network. And FG buyer and worker will come into the picture. Now, this is basically the general thing which we will try to do it for job posting. But there is a small change. Small change. Now, what is happening is like uh, this assignment when it came out over there. Here, <coughs> excuse me. What is happening is buyer is coming. They're basically asking the supplier for the resource and supplier is giving the resource and then worker is coming into the picture. Once this assignment came out, now what Fildas is basically proposing over here is key supplier will not only provide you the worker, but they will also take part in the whole process, just like in SOW. Okay. But there is a small change. And what is that change over here? Just a moment. Upfront supplier fee will be there. That's the first thing. Second thing is here. Is with buyer. So then why supplier is coming into this picture over there? Because this buyer don't want to basically pay directly to the worker. They will say, I don't want to basically pay to the worker. Why? Because there might be some other legal issues which can come into this picture over here. So how to resolve this particular thing? So in that case, they will basically say, okay, we will upfront pay some money to the supplier. What are the money for finding the resource and for transferring the amount to the worker, worker over there, we will pay some amount over there. But this supplier don't have any role with the worker. That means basically what work is to be done, who is the reporting manager of the worker, everything will be with the buyer. So this changes is coming over here, but how it will be implemented in the system that I need to basically uh, come back to you. Why? Because as I said, last year, April only, this assignment has been launched. So the whole process is still not matured enough. So frankly speaking, I have not implemented that process. But that is what Fildas is basically designing as of now. So I have to basically go ahead and read on this particular thing. Why? Because the last time, which I read, I think two months ago, this was the thing which we were basically talking about. But in reality, how the integration will work for, at a process level, they are not talked about it. So let me just go and find out about this particular thing. If any updates come, then basically I will discuss about that thing in our integration session in film class. If there's no update, then based on this only, we will discuss the integration structure. Okay. Because two months ago, there was nothing. Let me check right now whether some update has came or not. If update is there, based on that, we will discuss. If not, then based on this, we will basically talk about the configurations. Okay. Now, let me clear this thing over here. Okay, operational control of the worker is with supplier. So that is what you have to keep in your mind. Now, I think in today's session, 
it you know it helped you a lot to understand that what are the terminologies in you know which we use in fillers how the integration event work and all those particular things okay so we will discuss you know we have discussed this thing so that from our next session that means on coming saturday we can directly go and jump into this sow and we can see this particular process within the you know fillers system okay so that is why i wanted to make sure that those of you guys you know who don't know anything about fillers or maybe some theoretical concept you know about it before starting with the system you know all of you should be comfortable it's not like only those guys who know about fiddlers in this session will be comfortable with the things which we will show the other guys who don't have knowledge you know they will not feel comfortable it should not happen like that you should be comfortable so that means next saturday when we when we will basically go into the system and see everything all of you will be at par that means there is no discrimination so everybody is understanding the things so that is why we cleared all the concept the basic concept the basic tenets of fillers we have understood in today's session okay now guys if you are having any queries or question please do raise your hand don't try to raise your hand physically try to raise it in the go to training app and we will take your question answers right now Yeah, Javed, you can basically go ahead and ask your query. I think you need to unmute yourself, Javed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Manoj. Uh, it was very nice, nice session with you. Yeah. Um, there is a question which came in my mind. Like, if we are uh, making a contract through Ariba. Yeah. how the process is going to work like uh, from the contract workspace are we going to create the this sow or this sow will be created in field glass and then the contract will be placed um, no contract the contract thing. will not come into the picture so contract will never come into the picture why because <coughs> excuse me if you look at the integration point excuse me here we are basically integrating uh -huh. In yesterday's session, also I said, like we are integrating the Ariba buying and invoicing with that of Fillers. Upstream is not coming into so, the picture over here. Upstream is not at all coming into the picture. This is what you exactly. are saying. Exactly. Not at all. Yeah. So if let's suppose if I uh, we do not have the buying solution, Ariba buying solution then mm -hmm. uh, how the process is going to work like it, it will be with the sap rp only or will there be any touch point with the ariba as well no so if there is no buying and invoicing solution then directly uh, i think yesterday only i cleared it right that you don't have the mm -hmm. ariba buying and invoicing <coughs> excuse me in that scenario you will need to have the erp and direct integration of filters with that of erp will happen no Ariba buyer, no Ariba network. Okay. Uh, one last thing. So once we'll finalize the SOW, it, it will be done through the field class. So do we need to create yeah. a contract as well, or is it uh, not required at all, like even in the ERP? No, no, it's, it's not required. Why? Because SOW by itself is a contract. Now, there are uh -huh. certain, uh, what you can say, a uh, certain point of view uh, certain uh, people generally ask me uh, this question over there that uh, manoj uh, can't we basically replicate this contract from erp to fill us or ariba to fill us over there then basically i will say that you can't why because the contract which we have in erp or in ariba over there it is based on the normal services procurement normal material procurement you you won't have the contract against the advanced services procurement now some of you will basically say to me are manoj document is there now what file excel file is there we can attach whatever we want then i will say that will become a manual process so if you basically trans you know transmit those contracts from ariba to erp to that of fill last 
please don't think from there you can directly create SOW. You have to create it manually. <laughs> that means you have to download the Excel file. From the Excel file, you have to pick up the data and you have to create the SOW. It will not happen automatically. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, mm -hmm. your end user will say that what advantage you are giving Manoj that moving this contract from ERP to Ariva and fail us if you're moving it and then I have to download this Excel file and then I have to create it manually, SOW. What's the advantage? Instead of that, we can directly create a statement of work and fill glass. All right. It's clear to me. Thank you so much, Manoj. Yeah. Welcome, Javed. Okay. I think there are certain other questions uh, from other participants. Okay. Let me take the question. I have one question. When you say AFG is advanced procurement, AFG is only for staffing and services, whereas Ariba is having upstream and downstream model. Can you clear my query? Uh, yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. As I said, like, see, in yesterday's session, we talked about like the importance. If you are having 100,000 employees, 1 lakh employees, 60% of them, especially in US, Europe, are contractual in nature. You know, nature. That means 60,000. So, how are you going to keep a track of the 60,000 contractors? Because they're not like a permanent employee. The payroll will not run according to them and according to that they will not get paid. Why? Because this is a very transactional relationship. So 60,000 employees, you cannot work with Excel. Neither you cannot work with custom application. Why? Because custom application, if you want to integrate with ERP and Ariva, it's a gone case. A huge, huge amount of uh, enhancement will be required. You cannot do it in Ariva and with ERP, if you can do it, that will take some three, four years to build the solution. So what's the alternative? Fail glass is the alternative. That's the thing. So that is why remember in Ariba and in MM or, you know, MM in ECC, S4 HANA sourcing and procurement in S4 HANA or Ariba. There you're doing material pro procurement and service procurement. But in fill glass, you are basically doing advanced services procurement. Advanced services procurement means what? You're doing a service procurement, but instead of the line item, you're basically procuring the services of the contractors. So it's a special type of procurement, but nonetheless procurement. So it needs to be integrated with your financial system. Financial system is basically nothing but your ERP. Also with your procurement system. Why? Because you need the PO and invoice also. So that is why field loss is important and field loss should be basically integrated with your financial system bracket ERP as well as your procurement system that is Ariba in this case. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. After, uh, in any organization, if there are different projects with multiple worker requirement for each project, how many SO will SOW will be created? Uh, it depends on the projects. If you're having multiple projects, let's say, for example, three projects, three SOW, irrespective of the worker, whether one worker is there for one, in one project, in the second project, you need 20 workers. In the third project, you're having five workers, three SOW. So SOW always depends on the project. Okay, yeah, uh, I think Vignesh is having a question. Uh, Vignesh, you can basically go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and ask me your query. Hey, Manoj, how are you? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Vignesh, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. What about you? Yeah, fine. Thank you, man. My question is uh, the, com the, the client is having already a sales force where the contractors are filling the timesheets and getting the approval. Uh, yeah. If FG is in place, so will it yeah. replace or will it add, add it up uh, all along with FG and Salesforce? Okay. Now, uh, you know, if if I ask you some question, you know, I might look like a idiot over there, but I'm still going to ask that question. So can you do the payment from Salesforce? No, only the approval. After that, the payment will be done uh, manually, which means the attachments will be send uh, through email and to the finance and they will create yeah. the invoice yeah okay it's happening the integration is not there excuse me 
okay so that means like uh, you're saying the payment will be manual and then basically the status yeah, update yeah. will happen yeah. later on okay yes Correct. so basically yeah. excuse me yeah so we can do salesforce see uh if you look at the sap integration technique SAP integration basically provides standardization uh, integration techniques for SAP product for what for Oracle and Salesforce and GD AdWords. So by default, <laughs> if you're not using yeah. Tally ERP kind of thing or Microsoft Dynamics kind of ERP, then you have to build everything from the ground up. But for Salesforce, you know, it's not going to be a headache. That's the first thing. Second thing okay. here. You replace everything from Ariba and ERP with that of Salesforce. That is how your process is going to be. But, but let me tell you, I don't have experience in that because I haven't integrated Finla solution with that of Salesforce. So if I say that a PO will be created in Salesforce, so there I have to basically look at also the functionalities of Salesforce, whether PO can be created or not. If PO can be created, then what are the you know advantages? What are the disadvantages? That means how this PO will be sent to the supplier. In which mode it will be sent? In EDI mode or in email mode or through fax mode? All those things basically we have to consider. But in short, you replace the Ariba buyer, Ariba network ERP with that of Salesforce. That is basically going to happen. But I think not all the step might happen. It might happen a little bit different because the functionality of each of the system, right? Ariba, ERP, and Salesforce will be different. So based upon that, the integration will happen. But okay, the integration of Finlas with that of Salesforce won't be a challenging one. Why? Because they are standard connectors, standard mapping present for Finlas as well as Salesforce. Okay, so you mean to say the APIs are uh, available from the FG to connect with the uh, with the Salesforce and other ERP systems? Yeah, AP as well as procurement system. Both of these two things has okay. to be connected with Finlas. Great, great, great. Okay, that's all my questions. Thank you, thank you, Manoj, for your session. Yeah, well. yeah, welcome, Vignesh. Now, uh, I think uh, this is a good question over here. Uh, this question is basically uh, like how third party AP system is going to connect with AFG. So first and foremost thing, you have to do a little bit of hard work. As I said, if it is basically from Microsoft Dynamics or from other uh, non-supported ERP, so what will happen is like from the filler side, we have to work with the connectors. Okay, we have to basically set the web services configuration. Once that is done, then in your third party ERP, you have to basically say to that third party ERP developer, that boss, there also you have to configure the web services over there, but that is custom development. Okay, now just a moment. Yeah, Javed, you can go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and ask me your queries. Thank you so much, Manoj. So, so my question is that like uh, we have got SAP uh, ERP as well as we have got uh, Newton system, which is similar to uh, the Vim system. I would like to know whether uh, the field glass uh, integration will happen with the ERP only, or just just uh, ERP at the first place, or it will happen with the Newton system at the second place, or like do we okay. need the current setup is, is, of the ERP? The and... uh, do you do the payment in Newton? yes okay now in this all case, the invoices to... okay all the invoices like are processed in using yes okay then you don't need to fret for a moment why Q? because what is happening right now in erp whenever an invoice is getting created it is being processed in the new gen payment is happening and then status update is happening in erp right yes Okay, yes. then basically you don't have to think about it. You have to basically integrate Fidelas with ERP. What is your job? No. Your job is to basically move this invoice from Fidelas to ERP. Why? Because once this invoice is created in ERP, immediately this uh, integration things which is being established between ERP and Newgen will automatically take care of it. 
the payment will happen in UGEN, status update will come to ERP. From ERP, then you will basically move it to FIRLAS. So in this case, your integration should be between FIRLAS and ERP. Okay, so here uh, one question comes like uh, we asked the manpower suppliers to submit their invoices on the basis of the approved timesheet in the new gen. So they go to the new gen portal and they submit their invoices. So what yeah. will happen in the case of uh, new gen uh, FG comes into the picture? No, FG basically, as I said, uh, in this case, there is no manual invoices, right? So invoices, so this flow will basically change over there. What will happen is like invoices will be created automatically in FILDAS. It will be sent mm -hmm. to the suppliers so they can basically have a look at it, but they cannot change anything. And this invoice will also come into ERP. From ERP, it will be processed into NewGen, and then the status update will come to the ERP, and then this will basically go to the FILDAS. So this is how the new process will look like. So this is no manual process won't be used. Automated process will be used like this. So uh, here, so what I have understood that um, the field glass will send the invoice to the supplier as well as it will send the um, invoice to the new gen system and from the new gen system. No, no, not the new gen, invoice... not new gen, not new gen. See, hmm. uh, this invoice when it will be created, supplier can view it. Hmm but they cannot mm. edit it. And this mm. invoice will see uh, what will happen in this scenario. I will tell you exactly. So what will be happening is like timesheet approval is happening, then mm. transmitted to the supplier. Supplier can see the mm. invoice. Auto invoice mm. creation against the timesheet over there. Okay. Mm. Once that is done, then invoice transmitted here, it will not go to Ariba buyer. It will go directly to the ERP. Okay. Now IR will happen in ERP and payment will happen so, from ERP to new gen. You don't have to do any configuration for that. That is automatically present right now in your ERP. So IR will be, you are saying that IR will be created automatically as soon as the uh, FG sends the approved timesheet. Yeah. Yeah. It will basically send the invoice, which will be in parked mode, right? Once the park mode is there, so invoice reconciliation will happen and it will check the PO and the invoice directly. Everything is all right. Automatically, it will go into reconciled status. And then the payment request will basically get generated in the new gen. Payment will happen. Status update will happen, whether payment is done successfully or not. And from ERP, this payment status will go to the fill glass and it will be visible to both the buyer as well as the supplier. Okay. Any other queries? Uh, so it is not like much clear to me, but anyhow, um, so once we'll get into the hands on or the system, then we'll uh, have a more clarity and a more reflection of the system, then we'll grasp more from the system. Exactly. So but remember, I don't see the I thing is like, time, yeah. yeah, from ERP to new gen, you don't have to do anything. That is already set up right now. Our job is basically to integrate ERP with that. No, 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 no. So let me tell you what is happening right now. What the system is hmm. being built up in a such way that once hmm. you, once a supplier submit the invoice into the portal, then uh, we have BAPIs and the like user exits, which we call it. Hmm. And then from the new gen, we just hmm. process, we come back to the ERP and then we create the um, you know, yes, that is, that is right now process. without fill loss, right? So that is basically the yes. process which is happening without fill loss. Now, once you migrate yes. to fill loss over there, your total manual process will basically get replaced. It will get automated, right? So that is why, okay, why so I said, it means that we don't need the new gen in, uh, in that uh, new gen. Uh, new that gen time. will only be there for just payment related purposes, nothing else. Only okay. payment will happen. Okay. Rest of this okay. invoice and all those things, it will be automatically be created in fill glass and it will flow to the ERP automatically. Only thing is new gen means payment, but no okay, manual okay. process over there. Got it. Got it. So this process change, you have to basically tell to the supplier that boss, you don't have to do too much work. Invoice will be automatically be created on the approved timesheet. You can view it. And once this invoice goes into ERP, then payment will happen. Then the payment status also you can view it in fill glass. 
all right manoj one more uh, thing uh, this is not with yeah. regards to the class uh, something yeah. uh, personal so if possible can we connect uh, for 5 10 minutes after the class uh, not today oh. maybe during this coming week you know uh, let me find out some time over there okay this coming week maybe tuesday or wednesday we can have a call sure so how can we connect uh, shall i drop my number to you no no you just need to What's basically contact your bre who is your bre business relationship executive pallavi sana it's pallavi 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 na so you just basically tell pallavi that i want to uh -huh. have a call with manoj regarding this so she will ask me and then basically we can set a time and then have a conference call no worries thank you so much yeah welcome javed okay so i think basically this was the you know question answer session any other question guys you can go ahead and ask me or else we can conclude for today again uh, coming saturday we are going to meet but uh, i will highly urge all of you guys that if you are basically interested to continue with our sessions with this batch uh, please register yourself for this batch because from next saturday onwards the only, in, you know only registered candidate can come in over there and once you register you will get our links you will also get a system access then we will share the custom documents one by one all those things so that you can basically continue with those things yeah so i think we are good to yeah we are good to conclude our session for today so once again thanks eraj for conducting the session and thanks all of you guys for participating in our session uh, we will meet once again on coming saturday at the same time and uh i will highly urge all of you guys uh please go through the recordings specifically for the demo and today session in this week that means monday to friday 30th may till 3rd june why because if you don't go through this demo session today session what will happen is like you won't be understanding what we will do on saturday so it will be like hey what is happening anuj Okay, exactly yeah so once you register over there uh, you know allow some one working day or two working day what will happen is like a g drive access will be shared with all of you guys okay once you get the g drive access within the g drive access recording folder will be there within the recording folder you will get the session recordings yeah all the session recordings starting from demo but this week monday to friday from tomorrow till friday go through the demo session and today session yeah this is going to help you a lot on coming saturday session or else you will say emanu why you are talking in alien language <laughs> okay yeah so thanks a lot to eraj for conducting this session and thanks all of you guys for participating in the session let's conclude with our session for now we'll meet one second on coming saturday at the same time guys <coughs> excuse me have a great week ahead guys and please go through the recordings and next saturday we will continue with our session yeah thank you let's conclude our session for the day thank you guys